Greetings and welcome to this relatively odd video where I'm going to be discussing uh, hotkeys, the physical layout of, say, your keyboard or mouse, and how that affects where you are going to put your hot, where your abilities in game, as well as how to arrange your abilities in game, or at least how I do it, so that it makes sense to me and I can figure out where everything is. So right off the bat, the first thing we're going to talk about is the physical hardware you are using to play the game. Now, for Final Fantasy XIV, that is really only one and a half, well, two and a half options. It is either keyboard and mouse, or keyboard and MMO gaming mouse like I'm using, or a controller for PlayStation 4. Now, I think there is a way to connect a keyboard and mouse to a PlayStation 4. I don't remember if it's possible without an, a third-party add-on, but I remember seeing or reading somewhere that it was possible somehow. But anyway, so if you're looking down at your key, you're probably wondering what do you mean it's different. Well, a, a beginner... Well, somebody that is new to MMOs is going to start playing the game as he, it's key, well, and that person is going to see the first well bar down here is going to be assigned one through uh, the equal sign of the number row that is assigned up above the well, your letters. Now that is for some reason the default key ass assignments for every MMO ever. I have no idea why. It is extremely uncomfortable. It is not efficient and should never be used. So when I started playing MMOs and when I started playing World of Warcraft all the way back in vanilla, I started with that, but then I quickly realized that is not the way you want to play the game. Well, firstly, because if you try and use any key that is above the WS and D, your natural reaction is to use your middle finger, or your index finger, or your ring finger. But if you do that, you stop moving in certain directions, and that can be very dangerous, especially in PvP. So, what I decided to do is that I would instead use the number pad all the way on the right. And this may or may not be what many of you are doing. Now, how do you use a number pad? Well, really, you would think it's the exact same numbers as the number row, but they are actually not. They are considered separate uh, keys inside the actual Windows or Mac OS. And what I mean by that is that if I press one on my number pad, it's considered a different keystroke that still gives me a number one than if I press the regular number one. So they are different keys. So by using that, we can actually have... <clears throat> Sorry. A more clustered together set of keys that we can use quicker, well, in quicker succession with our fingers that allows us greater control over our character. So let's just look at it and see what we can do. For starters, we have numbers 1 through 0, which we can use. And then we've got the decimal point, the plus, the minus, the asterisk, and the slash that we can use. So that is already uh, three keys superior, well, better than the number row on top of the letters. So that's already a good thing. Now, the other good thing is that if you pl place your hand in, say, above the 4, 5, and 6, which is a, a centralized position on it, you have easy access to pretty much every key over there you can want. Your thumb can be used to press 0. It can be used to press the right and down keys, which I did do often. Then we have our pinky uh, or our ring finger that can hit the plus, as well as the minus, the asterisk, and our middle finger can hit the slash. And you already see how this is so much better than using the number row. It does take a little bit of getting used to, but this is where our key assignments in the game start coming in. So, what can we do? Well, the first thing you can consider doing is uh, arranging your key, well, your abilities, in such a way that it has a direct correlation to how they are in the real world. So, for example, this could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, as they are on the number pad. However, that leaves three more skills, so we could simply transfer those over here, as a fourth row over here, so zero, uh, decimal point, and plus. And we have three more skills, so that could be negative, asterisk, and slash. So right off the bat, we already have 15 keys assigned that we have very easy access to. We can even go a little bit overboard and then go all the way over here for the right arrow, the down arrow, and even page down if we so wanted. So as you can see, assigning things to the number pad is a lot more uh, what's it, uh, efficient and effective when playing a game. However, you getting used to using it is going to take a little bit, maybe a couple of days. But if I was able to do it with an old G5 Mac in World of Warcraft and get rank 3 in DPS on my guild as a warrior, then you can probably handle this as well. Now, the other way you can do things is assign them like how I have done. So as you can see, I have 1 through 0 and minus and equal over here. Now the reason it is equal and not a decimal point and plus is because this game has a particular problem 
uh, with shift and a number pad numbers. I do not know why it does that, but it has a very, very big problem with that. Let me show you what I mean. If we go into key bindings and we go into hotbar, you will see that I've already assigned one through zero and number pad one through zero, number pad and everything else. However, if I try to assign here, actually, give me a second. Control one, con here we go. If I try to assign shift one to this right here, there's a shift modifier and I get end for some odd reason. I have no idea why. Now, normally that would not be a problem because, all right, it's fine. I don't really use end, so I'll just use whatever keys it assigns to it because they're in the exact same place that I know they'll be. So if we go around, okay, that's down arrow, that's fine. Page down, that's fine. Unfortunately, that takes it away from that finger, so that's it'll be useless. And we now have a problem. As you can see, this game does not recognize shift number pad five as an actual keystroke. Why? I have no idea. But this is a problem because this limits us from having number pad, number pad, shift number pad, and control number pad only to having norm, normal numbers and control modifier numbers. So that cuts one third of the keys we had available to us to set up our, well, our abilities. And that is why I have it set up the way I do, using the number row buttons. But they, because I use an MMO gaming mouse, I basically set up the buttons on the side of my mouse so that instead of using the default number pad buttons, they use the number row. And so that got rid of the problem for me. And as such, I can have regular numbers, shift modifier numbers, and control modifier numbers. And now doing things that way, I can actually start setting up the way I like things in this game. So as I'm in, as you can see here, I have my standard ninja combo, which is this into this into this. However, this combo has three separate ways to finish. The standard, the dot applying one, and the armor crush, which refreshes my buff. Now, the reason they're arranged in this way is because they all use the three key. So it's one, two, three if to get things started, then one, two, shift three to get put my dot on, and then one, two, control three to refresh my buff. Now, control is all the way over here because it's not that easy. It's a little uncomfortable to stretch your pinky down there. So up here go the things that I don't use that often, but that I still use regularly. So trig attack and duality are there for that reason. Hellfire, Medium, and Babacagra are there because they are spammable, basically. And so that is my theory behind assigning everything. Now, for the ninja, I have my mudras assigned here because, as you can see, they're on the same row. Even if you're looking at them on your number pad, they're still on the same row. And then if I use four, Shift 4, I cast whatever it is I'm ready. And that is basically the only thing that I was focused on arranging when playing the ninja. Everything else landed where it is because I put it there. I got used to using it there, and that is where it stayed. Such things like, say, Dream Within a Dream and Assassinate, which is Shift 6, they just started there and they basically stayed there. Then we've got some buffs here, Tenchi Jim, which is on our relatively long cooldown there, it's over there. Shade Walker and other stuff like that. And that is how I arranged my keys using my MMO Gaming Mouse. Because I don't have to move so far around and everything is available to my thumb, I can, instead of focusing on arrangement, I can focus on modifiers to play it. So let's take a look at another class and see how I arrange that class similarly to this one. Uh, no, sit down, will you? Okay, here we go. Okay, now what? No, that is not the button. Here we go. Okay, so what is another complicated class? Aha, Dragoon. Here we go. Equip set. Here we go. Now, Dragoon is one of those, is a very interesting class because it has technically two weapon skill combos that then combo into each, at, to the end of the other one. Allow me to explain. So this is the weapon combo that you start the game with. It's, no, it's this one. This, into this, into this. And as you level up, you start getting this, into this, into this. As you level up even more, this it opens up a finisher for this one in this, and a finisher for this one in this. And then as you level up even more, as if you continue the combo and reach this part, this opens up a path to this one. And this opens up a path to this one. So as you can see, they're arranged that way because it just made sense to me. This one goes like uh, this, and then this one goes like this, and then we repeat. Aside from that, everything else was assigned a place, and I got used to using it in that place, and that is where it is. So let's say our jumps, right over here. So this is the jump, we've got Spine Shatter Dive, we've got Mirage Dive, and why did it end up there? I have no idea. It's Shift and 7 and 8, and it just landed there, and I got used to them being there. 
but they are together because they are all jumps. And that's what I tend to do with pretty much every class in the game. Keep the abilities that do similar things together. So for example, we have throw over here and throw over here. And then we've got buffs for ourselves. We've got a buff here, a buff here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and, here, and yeah. All those are technically buffs, so that's why they are relatively together. So let's take a look at another class, shall we? Let's see, what other class is fun? Um, ah, yes, here we go. How about Red Mage? So yes, now Red Mage was very interesting how it ended up being. So the way Red Mage works is that I would cast this first and get a free cast on whichever one of these I wish to cast first. And then one of those would eventually trigger either this one or this one. And as you can see, this one triggers Verse Stone, which is above it. And this one triggers Verse Fire, which is above it. So the combo for Red Mage was use this and then use either of these two, whichever one I wanted to use. If it procced, I it didn't matter at all because I would always go with Impact, which I would have a guaranteed usage because the buff always happens. And then I would be able to use instantly whichever one of these two was triggered by the ones below it. And so it's this into this, then this into this, well, that, and then this into this, no, into that, and then that into that. And so you get the idea. It's normal attacks and then shift and then just go on and forward. But that is not all we have here. The Red Mage has some melee abilities that make you dash in and do a decent amount of damage. So what do we do with those? Well, let's see. Here we go. Dashes forward. Here we go. Now, this so we have our dash in and our jump out. And so it's fill up our bars using the combination I told you. And then it's dash in. Use this, then this, then this, which is our melee combo, would you could say. And then jump back out. Whoosh. Now, similarly, I have my AoE grouped together. This is the one AoE you spam as a red mage. And whenever my bar fills up over there, I can spam this, which is right next to it. So it's always together. And that really is the key to how I do things, keeping, the, keeping stuff together. Outside of that, we have these two abilities, which are essentially abilities you need to spam every time, which is why they're together. Uh, Verholdi is not always available, and neither is Verflare, which is why they're over here. They're on six, which is also the final combo over here. So this tells me that these are my three most powerful abilities right here. Let's run over to another class. Let's see, what ninja... Oh, Black Mage. Here we go. Okay, now this one's relatively easy to figure out. So as you can see, I've got fire, 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 blizzard, 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 thunder, thunder. Now, because there is no third thunder spell because it's only a signal target or multi-target, I decided to put triple cast there because it's within the same range of all my other spells. Then we've got a buff, another buff, and another buff, and then we've got... AOE, AOE, and AOE. So as you can see, keeping stuff together makes it easy because I only have to press one button, and my other hand, which is my movement hand, keeps shift and control pressed, depending on what I want to do. Then we've got another buff, another buff, and technically a buff, because it's only available when you fill up a certain buff. But yeah, then more buffs, and then something I never use, and something I rarely use, and then more buffs, and more buffs, and... Yeah, you get the idea. Now, what else do we have? A Dragoon Bard. Here we go. Let's take a look at the Bard. What can we do with the Bard? Uh, let's see. What did we do? So let's see. That's available at level 1. So this is our standard weapon combo right here. And then this is... No, those seem spammable. So those are spammable. So those are right above the combo, which is fine. And then we've got... Um, a single tag was it? That's a buff, and that is a spam, another spammable ability, and another buff, and a jump bush I don't think I've ever used. So as you can see here, it's use this, and then we've got spammable abilities over here, and then we've got more weapon abilities over here, which is this over here, and then over here we have our three songs: Battle Voice, Mage's Battle, and Trouble Door, which is six, seven, and eight. Then after that, we have got over here and over here, which are our AOE abilities. Then we've got this. What is this? Uh, healing and then party buff, party buff, and um, enemy debuff. What is this? Uh, our execute, which is there for some reason. And oh yeah, here we go. So this is our song one, song two, and song three. Based on levels that you get them that. And so I... 
I now know that whichever song I am playing based on the row that is in, I know that once I activate, uh, is it this one? Yeah, this one, I know which what effect is going to happen. After, other than that, it's really all bust, uh, a bunch of utility spells all the way at the end, including potions, sprint, and everything else. But yeah, that is what I did with a bard. Not much there. Oh, Machinus, this is going to be interesting. Okay, Machinus. So, if you recall my Machinus video, <laughs> yeah, fun. This has a chance of triggering this, and this has a chance of triggering this. And that is why they're together. It's essentially a weapon skill combo, even though it isn't. Now this and this and this is here because they are the abilities I use the most. So they're right above the abilities that I'm going to be using all the time. Then above that we've got other things that make it, that are relatively important like rapid fire. We've got wildfire, we've got hypercharge, and then we've got the turrets over here. Well turret related stuff up here. Even if that one is down there because it's on a two minute cooldown I don't have to move my thumb too far to activate it. Then we've got abilities over here. More AoE stuff over here. Although Ricochet you should be using every single time, I think, I remember. Let's see, another, let's see, ability, one other weapon skill, right. So that's how I arrange that. There really isn't much to say there, because there aren't that many combos on this class. Let's see, what's coming up? Oh, Samurai, okay, this is going to be good. This is a good one. This is definitely a good one. Now, Samurai is very similar to Ninja in that this is their basic combo. But the first ability leads it can lead into this ability, which can lead it to either of these two abilities. So it's one, two, and three, and then it's one, shift, two, and either shift or control three. So either there or there. And that's on depending on which symbol I'm missing. Now, as you can see right next to them, I have stuff that is, re well, that is, uh, what's it called? Very relevant to those combos. So it's this, which grants us three weapon skills that we can, any of these that we can use whenever we want. We've got this, which is basically what we are working towards with these skills. And we have this. Um... Oh, right, right, right. I forgot this one. So, that is Setsu. Uh... Uh, let's see. Hakazi. Yep. So, as you can see, combo one, combo two, and then combo up here, three. So, the Samurai technically does have three weapon skill combos. One, two, three. One, shift, two, three. And then one, control, two, three. Actually, no, that, that one doesn't have combo into anything, I believe. No. So it's like that. Because it goes after this, it's on this row, and anything that went after any of these went on this row. And that's really how I arranged that. Then, other than that, we have AoE, so which is this one, which combos into this one. And then there is... What is this? Uh, combo point C... Sort of Fuga, which goes... Oh, there we go. Okay, so those two combo off of each other and grant you the two which you then use for this. So it's this into this, this into this, and then that, and just repeat. Then we've got this, which you need to use basically a lot, if I remember correctly. And then there's that one, which is one of our more powerful abilities, because it hits pretty much for, like a truck for a lot of people. Let's see, what is this? Oh yeah, we have our backdash, and then we have either a ranged attack or... Well, the effect of a... Or this one, I believe, we can be a super bound. Yeah. So this makes us jump back, and then we can actually, and then we can either slash him from afar, or we can dash in. And I think the point is to do all three in a row if you need to dodge an opponent's attack. Then we've got this, which grants us open as if we avoid it, well, reduce damage with it, which then gives us this, which is an attack. Or I believe we have something that heals. Oh, yeah, right above it, which heals us. So this leads into either of these. And this leads into uh, this or this. And yeah, that is the summary. So it makes a little bit of sense, right? The weapon skills are over here. And then this and this and this have a lot to do with these, which is why they're together. And then our AoEs are here. We, so they're together. And then the stuff, the other AoE is right above those. And then this stuff we are spamming a lot is right next to those. And yeah, you start getting the idea for the samurai that I did there. Ooh, black mage we've already done. I have two for the black mage. That is not cool. We need to fix that problem. We can just delete this one. Uh, delete that. Ooh, summoner. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so that's our basic attack spell. R.1 and R.2. Above that we have... Uh, Ruin 2. I believe that's there because something happened with it. I'm not really sure. 
We've got Death Flare, which we are going to do as often as possible because we we'll go into that state. And Dreadworm Trance, which has a lot to do with that. So it's work our way up and gather thing of a Aetherfly, I think it was called. And if we're in this, and so this is our finisher for that. So it's enter Dreadworm Trance and spam this as long as our dots are there and finish off with that. But then we have more stuff. We have Fester, which causes wounds, blah, 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 which basically deals damage. Try Disaster, which is relative to this one because we want both Bio and Miasma on it. So that's important to have next to it. And then we've got Shadow Flare, which is our AoE. Pain Flare, which is another AoE. And Tribone, which is technically an AoE, even if it doesn't do that much damage, but that's why that's there. Up here, we've got utility stuff that we need, such as Ether Flow, Energy Drain. I don't think I've used that in a long time. Swift Cast, you always want to make sure you have Swift Cast. And Addle, because it's necessary, at least it was when I did my DPS video for the Summoner, for maximum damage. Other than that, we've got our uh, pet-based abilities, which is Aether Fact, Rouse, and Summon Bakamut, so that's important there. If we have Bakamut, we've got Enkindo Bakamut and Enkindo for normal pets. And our pets right over here, which do, really don't do much. So that's what I did with the Summoner. There reason, wasn't much reasoning behind it. So let's see, what are we missing? Ooh, Monk. Okay, now this is another good one. Okay, so the Monk has technically three combo sets. Technically. So it's this, into this, into this. Oh, no, actually, right. Every single one of these skills switch you into... Let's see. Actually, no, that's not there. Uh... Grand Squeeze Lightning, can only be actually going Coral, right? And this switches you there and changes from Raptor. Well, like, give me a second here while I rem Let's see, that's there, Riddle Fire. Uh, increase the physical damage by myself and nearby party members, okay, okay. Okay, so we do have technically two. So these two switches to Raptor. And these two switches to Koryo, and these two switches to Opo Opo. And that's why they're together. So this is the sequence that they're used in. And all of them are together that give us, uh, whatchamacallit, the form that they switch you to. Now, at the beginning of the game, you're not going to have anything that, um, whatchamacallit, changes you to, or that gives you a bonus to these, I believe. But anyway, you can see my theory behind it. This switches to this. These two switches to a form that this benefits this one. These switches us to a form that benefits this one, and these switches to a form that benefits these, and so on and so forth. So as you can see, Opo Opo critical damage is dealt from the target sphere, and so on and so forth. Now, I do remember there being a couple skills here that I did not find particularly useful. Oh yes, Armor the Destroyer. The only time you will ever use this is while leveling up when you have to push a bunch of mines away from your group. If I recall. Now, Perfect Balance is there. I'm not sure why it's all the way over there. But it's there, so I'm probably placed there for a reason. Right or wrong, Form Shift. So this this switches our form so we can start in the proper one. And this lets you use pretty much any form whenever you want for its cooldown. Which is why they're together, so that makes sense. Then we've got, what do we have? Finisher, Tenyoki, you know. We've got Spammable Ability, uh, Spammable Ability, Spammable Ability. So that's why they're together. Uh, we have a buff, a buff, and more buffs, so that's why those are relatively near. And let's see, what is this? One known punch. I have never used this at all. And let's see, connection only basically in raptor form. Uh coero form. So technically this one would be right above these, but because I never use it, it's not there. And that one also requires Raptor, apparently. Oh no, changes from to Raptor, so that one would be above this one. Ish. No, this switches to Raptor. So that would be above here. And this one requires those. So that would go up here. So that so yeah, this one will be over here and this one will be over here. But because I don't use them, I remove them from there and put these two, which are actually more useful. The other forms over here. Healing and healing well related. Uh, that's actually new. I haven't played Monk in a long time, so I'm using Control 9 from my limit break now. So yeah, that is the th reasoning behind why I put things the way I do. Let's just back to Ninja, shall we? So in review, because I arrange things like I do, one through whatever number it is, and use Shift and Control for modifiers, I can actually arrange things like this. However, 
If you recall, if you're going to start using the number pad, you are going to have problems with your shift modifier, which is a problem. Now, if you have an advanced keyboard, like say a Razer or a Corsair keyboard or any other keyboard that comes with a program that allows you to modify macros and stuff like that for the keyboard itself, you could, in theory, rebind all of your number pad keys to number row keys, and then you wouldn't have any problems at all, which is what, definitely what you want to do. Because otherwise, you want into the problem that I showed you earlier, where Shift-5 doesn't exist in this game. It does in other MMOs. I remember in World of Warcraft, I didn't have any problems at all. But yeah, that is how I play, well, and how I assign all my abilities for every class in this game. Well, every DPS class. Actually, let's go over healing, shall we? Because I tend to do something very, very similar. So as you can see, we've got Cure, we've got Cure, and then we've got very big Cure for AoE. This is also an AoE, this is also an AoE, and that's just a regular Cure. So, single target curing, multi target curing, even more multi target curing, uh, benediction for emergencies. And then we've got, let's see, what else do we have over here? We've got a buff and another buff, and technically a buff because we place it on the ground. We have another buff and another buff, and technically another buff because we only use it sparingly ish. But then we have our very, very scarce abilities here. We've got stone, arrow, and arrow feet. They're over here because I don't use them that often. That's where they're all the way up there in the control section. And really, after that, we have basically all these few skills left over here. Don't really use it that much. Don't use it that much. That's another break. It, I should never have to use that. And you generally get the idea. Single target. Buffs over here. Then we've got multi-target, multi-target, and emergency heal. So that's how I arrange things for healing. So yeah. That is how I do things over here for every, single for every single class. Hopefully, all this ranting I just did makes some sense to you, especially when arranging your keys. And hopefully what I told you about the number pad as, uh, key binding assignment and the problem that this game has with shift and key and number pad numbers uh, doesn't put you off because I do believe it is definitely a better way to play right, well, right below the... MMO Gaming Mouse because it's what I do and it just makes sense to me. But anyway, thank you for watching and we will see you next time.